I'm good. Whenever, uh, whenever you guys are ready. Um, good afternoon. My name is Erica Jaroch. This is Dylan Err, Bobby Bowman, Cole Fisher, and Jack Sweeta. And we are Young Rowe. So, every 25 seconds, a high school athlete is admitted to the emergency room due to a sports-related injury. When our team heard the statistic, we knew that this was the problem that we wanted to solve. Doctors and medical professionals everywhere recommend rice when going through the athlete recovery uh, cycle, which stands for rest, ice, compress, and elevate. Icing and compressing are two of the most difficult components, as we see that athletes have trouble with saran wrap, rectate, and otherwise bulky ice bags when trying to accomplish this process. Our product focuses on the icing and compressing methods. Through specifically placed pockets, we compress ice to targeted locations in the body where um, athletic injuries are most common. So for our first customer segment, we intend to sell to um, active people ranging from the ages of 14 to 35. We decided this because we they're some of the most active athletes and this will cause them to incur a lot more injuries, which will make the product a lot more relevant for them. But then through interviews we realized that many of these high school athletes and younger adults are not uh, are not willing to pay as much for the product. So we wanted to focus on the adults of the parents of these um, younger adults and high school athletes, which would um, cause us to reach a much greater market than just the high school athletes. We are also trying to work with um, boutique gyms where they can just hold our product or put some type of flyer in there and that will increase our exposure but we will not only do that but reach our um, two main customer segments. And one thing that is great about our uh, product market is that we have, uh, we have, through research we've only found one major competitor and that is one thing play harder. They are also a compression clothing company that uses ice, icing pockets but uh, they have a major issue with their price. Their price, yeah. their price is all the way up at two hundred fifty dollars for a pair of pants, while our product is all is at sixty to seventy dollars for pants. So we will appeal to a much greater market size than just the um, the higher price. So um, back in February, we moved into our MVP process. Um, at the start of that, we um, decided to go first to high school um, high school athletic trainers and students. So we met with about six high school athletic trainers, and this was good because it really validated our high school athlete market. We found out that, um, that athletes every day are coming in, no matter the season, no matter the time of the year. And um, we also found out that they, the trainer themselves will not be a customer segment because um, they currently are using a saran wrap, and they have very small budgets, so that will not, it's not financially viable for them to be purchasing this. But um, in in addition to this, we also talked to about four, uh, we talked to four gyms and all four of them have signed on and have agreed to um, hold our product once we have an inventory. They, um, so of course there are some um, different components like um, Flow is, Flow uh, MMA and Palatine, they want a small run first, but then like um, the source training in Barrington is asking, uh, is said that they're willing to sell it uh, at face value and buy it at face value, they don't need to make a profit. Wow. So, um, we also, we learned a lot from our product, so I'll actually hand out the prototypes right now if you guys can pass around. Got in the black are the pants and the gray is the shirt. Sorry. Um, so many of, of about our 80 or so interviews, we um, learned that the fabric is too thick. For example, the pants are uh, about a 12 ounce fabric, we want it to go down to a 9, and the shirt is a 9 ounce fabric, and we want that to go down to about a 5 ounce. Yeah. But and we also learned that when we were selling at about seventy dollars, that was too much, uh, too much for our um, target ranges, and um, we have moved that down to about fifty to sixty because we can still make a, a very large profit in this, and it's um, it's the rate, it's more than people's price ranges. So we also learned a lot about the garment industry, how to um, talk to manufacturers and what we need to know before we approach them, and about the um, rights in general. We learned that. About 30 to 90 people every day will come in, depending on the season, to a high, uh, to a high school athletic trainer just asking for ice. And um, we also um, we also learned that icing is more used for um, to reduce swelling and to to reduce swelling and to reduce pain, which is why it's so popular and why it's a necessary um, why it's a necessary component in it. So overall, we learned that we need that our market would need it to be much larger. We went from uh, high school athletes only to um, uh, athletic people 14 to 35, and that's because um, high school is still 
a um, very large and um, usable market, but also based on the clientele of uh, many of the gyms we're going to be in, we needed to increase our market, our uh, market size. And also, we will be selling to the gyms and to um, parents that are 45 and up because not every high school athlete is able to afford a shirt or a pair of pants that is 50 to 60 dollars. So we have, um, we will also be marketing to their parents. So, so stepping into our financials a little bit, you're looking at a total adjustable market of the entire United States, and is it the population that works out? And that estimates to a dollar amount of 850 million. However, that's a very large market. So if you look at our serviceable addressable market, which is the Chicagoland area itself, for people who work out there, you're looking at a dollar amount of about 12.8 million. Now, for our market share itself, we're expecting to hit about 2% of our serviceable addressable market by year two, um, which is about $191,000. Um, so here we have one of our wonderful model, Cole, is demoing our product. And you can tell right here that um, the cost to build the pants itself is going to be $25, and we're going to be selling at a retail price of $60 because that's kind of fitting within people's price range. And then again, you see it's relatively the same thing with the shirt, the shirt at $20, and then the retail price at $50. Um, moving into our SG&A costs, we're going to be spending a lot of money on marketing. So as Bobby was talking about earlier, he was talking about how we're going to be trying to get into boutique gyms. We're also going to be setting up different kiosks at local sporting events, trying to be able to really get in front of our main customer markets. And we're also going to be setting up a lot of flags. However, as we move into years three, four, and five, we're also going to be looking at search engine optimization, which is where we're going to be able to really get in front of people as much as we can as we try to enter into retail stores. Uh, we're also going to be spending SGA costs on accounting and um, technology costs just to make sure that the business is up and running, and then there will also be other administrative costs as we move further in our years. Um, so here you'll be able to see our bar graph in regards to how well it is our company is going to be doing. So there's a nice healthy steady of profit as we move through our first five years. You'll notice a little bit of a dip in year three, but that's simply because we really want to have an aggressive marketing technique as we move into retail stores like Dick's Sporting Goods to really be able to get our product to the next level. Um, for selling our product itself, we're going to be selling a year five to an IPO. Uh, we expect to be able to really make the uh, best amount of profit based on that because we feel like shareholders are really going to care about holding out our product um, and try to make a profit with us. However, if that doesn't work out, we can always go to a major retailer like Under Armour or Nike to sell it that way as well. <clears throat> all right, so going into the cost of all this, uh, about what I've been discussed, um, we are looking forward to producing 300 pants for $7,500 and 300 shirts for $5,000. And uh, also going into what uh, Jack said about the marketing, um, we were able to spend about $2,800 on the kiosks in local sporting events uh, for like the face-to-face -face interaction, really trying to get our product out there, as well as the flyers that we were planning to uh, place in the uh, boutique gyms and such. Um, as well, we would also be uh, looking uh, planning to spend $8,000 on our website development and management, as well as legal fees such as the patent that we are licensing. And uh, to kind of sum it up, um, our pre-value of $260,000, and uh, we would be asking for $27,000 for 16.1%, and that all comes out, uh, that all comes all about to $287,000, which is a 16 times amount. And uh, kind of giving a little overview of what I just discussed, um, uh, the uh, website development would be about 6800 $6, and the patent would be about $1,200 um, and the value up there, which would go up to $27,000. Okay, so um, overall our MVP process taught us a lot. Unfortunately, we discovered that high school students weren't necessarily interested in a $60 to $70 price range. However, this taught us that we need to increase our market share uh, and aim it more towards parents and young adults who are also, also athletes. Um, so we know that the compression market industry it uh, will increase 5.2% compounded annually uh, each year, which means that by 2020, the market will be worth about $3.23 billion. Um, in that time, we want to increase our inventory, and through this, we want to keep and grow our partnerships with gyms, and that also includes increasing our market share and uh, word of mouth based on who knows us. Um, so overall, we'd like to thank you for your time, and we hope that you are ready to join our process of helping athletes recover.
um, not like very well known, not like a, well they're well known, they're obviously pretty big, but they, they uh, vary. They're obviously pretty big, how, how big are they? Um, I'm not fully sure at the moment, but I know that they have a much, much wider variety of products than just what we have, which is a shirt and Are they a nice publicly traded company or? Um, I'm not fully what sure. What I'm trying to drive at is, I mean, uh, how do you know that people wear this stuff? Because it's a, um, well, it's a great solution instead of using like bulky um, saran wrap instead of, and like all that stuff that you get from a trader. It's easier to, and it's more convenient to so you, you use the perceive that they wear around all day long? No, you can like wear the compression like while you work out, and then once you're done, you can put the take the ice that you get and put it into the pockets, right. and you can or you can wear it if you want to. It's your and choice. Are there readily available ice packs to uh, you know fill these pockets? That's the one thing we hope to expand on in the future. Right. Is currently we don't have a solution for that, but the pockets are measured to hold them. Well, I've seen ice packs. You know, they're, they're yeah. around, but the, that's an idea you guys could incorporate as an additional product line. How about the compression now? Factor is it, is it uh, you know is the material that you're showing us good enough to provide a high level of compression? Yes. Yeah, so what we're using is an 88% um, polyester with 100% spandex mix uh, fabric, and that is the exact same that is used in just about every company's product. Like we said, Nike uses for their products. It's the most common compression, um, the most common compression fabric on the market. Did you go ahead, Brian? Did you did you handle that that one hundred ten percent? Uh, competitor, were you able to actually handle that firsthand? Their clothes, mm -hmm. see why they would be charging so much more than what you're charging for. Awesome. Um, we know that one of the solutions, or one of the reasons that they charge so much, is because um, one of the only bounds in compression clothing has been the type of material it's made out, such as like um, uh, like wet uh, resistant or the sweat resistant. I don't know. That's kind of what makes up their prices. I wasn't clear, was, is your exit strategy an initial public offering? Yes, it would be, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, Do you, are you sure the competitor doesn't have a patent on this, or? Yes. I um, suspect that they may, or? Uh, we actually were working with a guy who um, lives in Naperville, I believe, who has a patent on this, and when we found out that they had this product, like, I actually texted him, texted him and told him about this, because, um, so he could look into it and see if he could design it. So did, didn't he say so somebody does have a competitor or a patent? Yes, <laughs> there's a patent on this. Um, the way it works is slightly different. Like there's a, say the pockets right here, there would be um, uh, Velcro, yeah. and you take like an ace bandage and wrap it around. So right now our plan is, um, we met with him back in November, so our plan is currently to license it from him, but we are also looking for a way to get around the patent and get around. So one thing that doesn't make sense to me, I get the shirt being compressed, heavy compression, but the pocket doesn't. And isn't that actually where you actually need the compression? Right, so that pocket that you're holding right now is actually put on, we put it on incorrectly by accident. Okay. But um, if I go back to um, the slide, here it is. Forward? Uh, yeah, right there. So this white thing right here is actually an ice pack um, inside the pant, and it was held just as tightly as the saran wrap right. of the trans. So if you put enough in, if you stop it enough, you, yeah. you get the compression mm -hmm. effect. And when you wear the, when you actually wear the, um, wear, when you wear the product, the pocket hugs tight to the leg, just along with the pant. How do we understand the benefit of this clothing? <coughs> I understand pulling it out mm -hmm. the heat or ice is going to be the
though they did validate that this was a problem and that this um, that they would use this product and spend the amount of money we were asking for on it, um, after we so we started at seventy dollars and sixty for the shirt, we only had to reduce it by ten dollars for them to be willing to purchase it at our price. But then we realized that we had the problem of we have nowhere to sell this other than our website. So we went to the gyms and we we met with all four of these gyms. Um, uh, so we met with all four of these gyms and have established a. A relationship with them, and they have all agreed to. Um, is, is that Brian's store? Yes. Good. 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 If you sell these to retailers, besides the guy that's giving you a break and yeah. letting you do it for free, so ignore that. It's probably not repeatable anywhere. Did you get an idea of what you have to sell it to them at wholesale in order for them to sell it to the consumer at 60 or 50 or 60 dollars? So we estimate about a 20 to 40 percent discount if that usually ends up becoming an issue because that's usually a margin that uh, competitors are able to work with to be able to sell it in their stores. Um, for smaller boutique stores like this, they usually have a little bit lower range than a higher retail store like Dick's Sporting Goods were. So like Dick's Sporting Goods, we're looking at about 35 percent, somewhere around here, be close to 25 percent. Okay. And that's worth it in your market. You can make money mm -hmm. at that margin because you have $20 of expense, $25 of make it. Yeah. Yes. And you have to remember that not only are we going through these um, boutique gyms, but we're also taking a look at kiosks and separate sporting events. So close a football game, the rest of us will be out there selling shirts, you know, something like that. Um, and then we are putting out flyers out there at these gyms. They don't have to have the product on hand there. We're still selling it through our website as well, so we can make direct profit. Where, where are you in terms of production? Are you ready to start boring stuff? Uh, we are not, so we... Uh, um, I actually, I have been in contact with a manufacturer in New York. Um, they're Shiloh Bird. And uh, we have been emailing back and forth. She's been talking about like estimates on a 300 bulk order. But okay. we don't have anything to Bill, the um, uh, statement you made regarding your marketing segment target markets. Um, I, I get it in terms of fitness centers and all that, but given the combination of benefits you're trying to offer of athleticism plus rehab, have you had conversations with people like Athletico, you know, the um, physical, uh, physical, physical therapy sessions, uh, places, because, um, yeah, no, sorry, go we ahead. Have not. I, I kept on calling Cairo Fit, um, and we tried to get in the door there and talk to them, but we weren't able to. It, for some reason, every time I called, they seemed to like, try and rush me to get off the phone. Okay. Well, and we have some right. admirers of the incubator program mm -hmm. at the high school at Atletico in Barrington, because they've had quite a few of you guys in there as, mm -hmm. as patients as well. Um, but I know um, that with their patients, they often, as part of the rehab process, want you to replicate the, either the heat or the ice mm -hmm. while working out in some responsible fashion. And they also sell gear their shirts with their logos. So taking a page from what you're trying to build with CrossFit, mm -hmm. displaying your product and selling mm -hmm. for free, th that could be an interesting, slightly different channel mm -hmm. of where you're selling your product for Atletico to brand, but their customers, their patients are actually going to use it because mm -hmm. they're going to put in yeah. their ice packs and ice packs. Just a thought. Yeah, because this is only, you're only selling to a fraction of those people, the people that yeah. are injured. Yeah. And I don't, do you have any, any numbers on, on all uh, from your TAM? How many of those people are get injured? Is it 10% of that population? Um, I want to say it's close, I'm just guessing. I want to say it was closer to 50%, wasn't it? Um, so 50% of all the people that exercise in these places have an injury at yeah, one point. Yeah, about 50% of them usually end up getting injured in some is, way that our product would be applicable. Is it just for injuries or is it for recovery? You know, when you do have a hard workout, you know. Yeah, ice yeah, you, can, you can use it for that. Um, my ice is most commonly used for like minor injuries like tendonitis, that sort of thing. But if you're if you're sore and want ice, that is also an option. It's just not as common. Also, percentage-wise, I'm not entirely sure, but I do know that when we interviewed different trainers, they said that they, they regularly see 80 to 90 kids coming for ice packs every day. Yeah. Wow. They're low season mm -hmm. around the period of four days, but like, when there's no sports. It is your other trend where there's like like baseball pitchers or, or, or is there, there's like a, a lot of them centered around a certain cross country and football. Uh, yeah, for, the big for 10 seconds. Definitely for um, fall, it's more cross country and football. Um, and then winter is more basketball, volleyball, and then um, spring. spring is it's more like soccer, baseball, and uh, track. Hey, can you just 
go back to the patent stuff, but the MVP, I think you told us last this point guy I was going to release his patent to you for nothing. Does that position change? Uh, it sounds like your answer. The patent, it sounded like the guy that you found locally when we talked to you mid part of the year was fine, take my patent, run with it. I'm not going to charge you, right? Yeah, not so until we make a certain Right. So, okay. um, we do you have that in writing from him? We have a um, we have a licensing agreement, and we have an, um, we have a licensing agreement from him. We try to go over with um, Phil Dolan from who works at the computer last year, and um, we just had trouble getting in contact with him. But we plan on definitely looking at that in the future. Or, or go through, go through legal zoom. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you have uh, that patent, somebody's a, the guy, the 110 company is already printing on it. Mm -hmm. We did, you know, we were texting about that. Yeah, I, I told him that. Okay. Cool. Great. Good job. Thank you.